football, and a game played all around the world. Questions have been raised as to who is truly the GOAT of the beautiful game. Is it Messi? Is it Ronaldo? Is it Pele? Welcome to the Top 20 channel, and today we'll be counting down the greatest players of all time. Coming in at number 20, one of the few defenders on this list, it is the great El Capitano, Paolo Maldini. Renowned for his leadership and longevity, this five-time Champions League winner and seven-time Serie A winner is widely regarded as the greatest tackler ever. His unrivaled defensive awareness and timing of tackles saw him best some of history's greatest legends, such as Maradona, R9, and Ibrahimovic. Since his illustrious career as an AC Milan legend, he is widely regarded as the greatest Italian player of all time. Number 19, a play with all the qualities of a perfect striker, the son of Utrecht, Marco van Basten. He earned such a nickname through an elegant mix of athleticism and technical ability, especially in the air with headers and volleys. This was brilliantly showcased through the winning goal that Marco van Basten scored in the 1988 Euro Finals, where he seemed to volley the ball from an impossible angle, putting it in the back of the net and winning the country's only international trophy. Unfortunately, Van Basten was forced to retire at just the age of 28, following a career-ending injury, yet still remarkably won three Ballon d'Ors. His career is still remembered as a big what-if in the minds of many fans. Coming at number 18, it is the first ever football superstar, fifth Beatle, Jordi Best. Best is most well known for his ambidextrous dribbling style, which mesmerized fans and defenders alike. In his prime, it could be argued that he was the greatest player ever in the history of British football. Best dominated every opposition on his way to winning the European Cup in 1968. It is unfortunate that Best's own lifestyle would jeopardize his career trajectory leading him to get transfer listed by Manchester United at just the age of 27. So very similar to Van Basten, it could be argued that we never truly saw Best's full potential. The Ballon d'Or winner will always be remembered by his fans through the mantra of Maradona good, Pele better, George Best. Number 17, commonly touted as the greatest British player of all time, is Sir Bobby Charlton. In 1958, the Munich disaster tragically claimed the lives of eight Manchester United players. Of the survivors, one would go on to miraculously overcome his injuries and become one of Manchester United's icons. The Ballon d'Or winner Bobby Charlton was known for his unbelievable work ethic, shot power and chiefly his performance in 1966, winning England their only World Cup. He also featured in the iconic United Trinity, Best Lord Charlton, which led to Man U's first European Cup victory in 1968. Although not talked about as much as George Best, Charlton did embody qualities of greater professionalism and longevity, which is why Sir Bobby Charlton is rated higher than the dribbler from Belfast. Number 16, the greatest box-to-box -box midfielder of all time, the Panzer Lothar Mateus. Once remarked by Maradona as the greatest opponent he ever faced, Mateus was renowned for his perceptive passing, positional sense, well-time tackling, as well as powerful shooting. His complete skill set helped him captaining Germany to their third World Cup win, defeating Maradona in 1990 and earning him the Ballon d'Or in the same year. In his later years, he transitioned into a sweeper, winning German Player of the Year at the age of 38 after winning his final and seventh Bundesliga title. Number 15, the powerful Black Pearl, Eusebio. Speed, strength, dribbling, and possessing one of the fiercest shots of all time. With Benfica, he reached an impressive five European Cup Finals in eight years, winning at once in 1962. Eusebio was most famous for his heroic performance in the 1966 World Cup, scoring nine goals, taking Portugal to the highest ever placing level of third. Eusebio lost the Ballon d'Or that year by a single point to Charlton, although he did win it the previous year. Eusebio is unanimously acknowledged as the greatest African-born player of all time. Number 14, a striker with an instinct for goal like no other, the bomber, Gerd Muller. 
Gerdmuller had a knack for scoring goals out of thin air, especially ugly goals. He scored a record breaking 85 goals in 60 games in a calendar year, and this record was held for four decades. Muller was also the World Cup top scorer for 32 years. He was the last player to reach double digit goals in a single World Cup. A three time European Cup winner, Muller also scored in the World Cup final and defeated the legendary Netherlands squad of 1974, cementing Muller as being one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. Coming in at number 13 is the little bird Garincha. Garincha grew up with a right leg six centimeters shorter than his left, but this didn't deter Garincha from becoming Brazil's legends and being regarded as one of the greatest dribblers of all time. When Pele and Garincha played together for the national team, they were undefeated. When Pele was absent from the 1962 World Cup due to injury, Garincha single-handedly won Brazil's second World Cup through his insane dribbling skills down the wing, crossing and scoring abilities. Garincha unfortunately struggled with many problems off the pitch and declined sharply after 1962. Number 12, the player known as the White Pele, Zico. Known for his goal scoring, dribbling and creativity, Zico's goal scoring record puts him amongst the best goal scorers of all time. But here's the catch, Zico was a midfielder in 1979, he scored 72 goals in a calendar year, with only Messi, Gerd Müller, and Pele to ever score more in a single calendar year. And he was a midfielder! He's also one of the greatest free kick takers of all time. Overall, Zico is quite underrated amongst European fans, but that didn't stop him from being placed number 12 on our greatest of all time player list. Never in football have we seen a more terrifying combination of raw explosiveness and skill than the phenomenon Ronaldo. The youngest ever Ballon d'Or recipient at age 21, Ronaldo's raw talent, close control and explosiveness led to Ronaldo being in contention for GOAT status at a very young age. Unfortunately, Ronaldo got severely injured in 2000, which took two years to recover. Although still world class, Ronaldo was never the same due to the decline in his speed and explosiveness. Ronaldo's return did see him winning the World Cup in 2002, scoring eight goals, two in the final, and becoming an all-time World Cup scorer at the time with 15 goals. Many of you may be wondering, why isn't R9 high on the list? And that's mostly because his peak was cut short and his goal scoring record just doesn't quite match up with the other great strikers, particularly in the Champions League, which Ronaldo famously never won. Number 10, seemingly playing in slow motion at times, a player who embodied pure elegance and intelligence is the legendary Zizou Zinedine Zidane. Known for having an incredible first touch and control, Zidane won everything there was to win as a footballer. The Champions League in 2002, the World Cup in 1998, two-time Serie A winner, the La Liga champion. Zidane was known as a big game player, often showing up when his team needed him most scoring the most insane volley I've ever seen in a Champions League final. This big game player reputation, however, meant that Zidane tended to be a little bit inconsistent with his club career. But this didn't stop Zidane from making number 10 for the greatest players of all time. Number 9. The most dominant player during Serie A's golden age in the 1980s, Napoleon of football, Michel Platini. Arguably the greatest passer of all time, Platini's long passes were the stuff of legends. Platini's leadership, goal scoring and passing allowed him to win three Ballon d'Ors consecutively in an era where players like Maradona, Zico, Mateus, Van Basten, Hullet were all in the league. Platini is also known as one of the great tournament performances in the 1984 Euros, scoring nine goals in five games to win his nation their first national trophy. Unfortunately, Platini's reputation and legacy as a player has been damaged due to his controversial time as UEFA president. Number eight, the man with the great left boot, the galloping major, Ferenc Puskas. Puskas had arguably the greatest shooting ability in history, scoring 708 goals in just 718 appearances. Puskas has the most hat-tricks ever in 
first level matches in Europe with 61. He's also the only player to score four goals in a European Cup final against Frankfurt in 1960. Football historians also claim that he has the most assists of all time at around 390. Pushkas orchestrated his nation's unbeaten run of success of 28 victories and four draws that stretched across four years. With accolades like these, it is only fair that Ferenc Pushkas is placed at number eight for the greatest players of all time. A true revolutionary, our number seven player is the greatest defender of all time, the Kaiser Franz Beckenbauer. Known as the most complete player of all time, Beckenbauer was renowned for his football IQ, passing and control on the pitch. Beckenbauer had practically invented the libero advanced sweeper role, having more of a presence in build-up and attacks than the traditional sweeper. This guy was so crazy that he played in a sling during the 1970 World Cup semi-final against Italy in the match of the century after dislocating his shoulder. He then led Germany to a World Cup glory after defeating Prime Cruyff and his total football Netherlands squad in 1974, cementing Beckenbauer as the seventh greatest player of all time. Number six, the star of the first Galacticos, the blonde arrow, Alfredo Di Stefano. In the 50s, there was no greater player than Alfredo Di Stefano. Involved in all areas of the pitch, he's the reason behind Real Madrid becoming the greatest club of all time. He won five European Cups in a row, scoring in each final. Di Stefano was also the only player in history to win the Super Ballon d'Or in 1989 for being the best European player of the last 30 years in 1989. Although a brilliant club player, it is unfortunate that Di Stefano never played in the World Cup. Number five, touted as Pythagoras in boots, my personal favorite player ever, Johan Cruyff. The three-time European Cup winner and three-time Ballon d'Or winner was known for his ambidextrous technical brilliance, speed, otherworldly vision, and ability to play anywhere on the pitch. Cruyff had this incredible ability where he capitalized on openings on the field that no one else was able to see. And nothing exemplified this genius greater than in the 1974 World Cup final, where Cruyff willfully dropped deep from center forward position in the first minute and commanded the center back to give him the ball. And then he began dribbling past several German players from his own back line as if they weren't there to earn Netherlands a penalty. Or how about when Cruyff bamboozled defenders through creating his own skill move known as the Cruyff turn? Or what about during a penalty when Cruyff decided to pass the ball to a teammate instead of shooting? The word genius doesn't begin to describe the influential brilliance of Johan Cruyff. Number four, the one and only CR7, Cristiano Ronaldo. A young tricky winger who turned into one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. Cristiano Ronaldo had a winning mentality and work ethic like no other. His insane athleticism, skills and attacking positioning made him an expert in goal scoring, whatever the situation. CR7 actually has the most goals of all time, the most international goals of all time, and the most Champions League goals of all time. He was also able to win five Ballon d'Ors in the same era as Lionel Messi, which is just a testament to the sheer greatness of Cristiano Ronaldo. Coming in at number three, the hand of God himself, Diego Armando Maradona. Never before has a player reached the heights of Diego Maradona. Maradona shredded through every opposition on his way to his 1986 World Cup win through his divine talent, will to win, and playmaking abilities. His legendary status was cemented against England, where he scored the infamous hand of God, and then dribbling past six players as well to score the goal of the century. And this wasn't even his best performance of the tournament. Whether it was taking a relatively average Napoli team to become two-time Italian champion in an insanely competitive era, or leading his country on the biggest stage, no one has been able to carry a team quite like Diego Maradona. Coming in at number two, touted as the king of football, it is Pele. Pele began his professional career at just 15 years old and won his first World Cup at 17. 
Pele had absolutely zero weaknesses. He had the conditioning of a contemporary athlete and was doing tricks that no one had ever seen before, scoring more goals than anyone has scored before. But many debate Pele's level of competition back in the 60s. But actually, not only was Brazil one of the strongest leagues in the world at the time, but he actually has 144 goals in 130 games against the best European clubs in the world. Pele was known for his success with the Brazil national team, being the only player to win three World Cups. Pele was not only a brilliant player, but also made the country of Brazil and the sport of football known across the world, which is why he's known as the king of football. Before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions. Ronaldinho, Roberto Baggio, Lev Yashin, Romario, and Franco Baresi. Finally, at number one, it is the greatest player of all time, La Pulga, Lionel Messi. What can I say about Lionel Messi that hasn't been said before? He can dribble through a whole team, find inch-perfect passes for teammates, and he can seemingly score at will. Seven Ballon d'Or wins with eighth on the way, six Golden Boots, 91 goals in the calendar year. These are just the tip of the iceberg for the insane achievements of Leo Messi. Messi has often been criticised for his lack of international achievements early in his career, and this was completely dismantled with the 2021 Copa America win and his 2022 World Cup win, where he was also player of the tournament. Across his career, he has answered all questions regarding ability, longevity, consistency, and achievements. And it can no longer be ignored that Lionel Messi is the greatest player of all time. And that concludes our video for the top 20 greatest players of all time. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Feel free to put your top 20 lists in the comment section below.